Well, greetings, YouTube. If you didn't notice, we're doing this in 4K. So big thank you to Brian for that. And a big thank you to our Aunt Sylvia for loaning us the SIBO Felix. And this SIBO Felix actually has nothing wrong with it. But Aunt Sylvia has some allergies, so before we send it back, I'm going to wipe it down. And I thought it'd be a great opportunity to go through you with you all what's inside of Felix. Because it's a really cool vacuum. It's a canister, it's an upright, it's a backpack, it's everything. Um, so just bear with us, we're going to use the factory mic right now in this camera, but we will be switching microphone formats. Um, so the first thing you're going to do, really when you get any vacuum, is of course plug it in and make sure it works. Uh, make sure you're not making anything worse. <laughs> All right, everything is operating good. So let's start off with the ET1 power head. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the body aside. We're gonna zoom in on the power head area and go from there. Now, if you haven't ever opened up one of the SIBO products, you notice the brush roller comes out very, very easily. I have to get a tray put the uh, Put the screws in. So, first thing we're gonna do is break it all down. So there's a button right there. And that's what you wanna to use to pull the brush roller out. You give it kind of a half turn. These are dishwasher safe, so I'm actually gonna go upstairs and wash this. Um, and then there's a bearing end cap. And we'll talk about that when we put it back together. Now the other thing that's cool about the Felix is it uses Phillips screws in most of its construction, not in all of its construction. But you're going to notice they're not all the same, and there are reasons behind that. Uh, so if I pull this plate off, you can see, and this is, or you can order this part right now by itself, which is kind of cool. Pull the door off, and next thing, this is probably the hidden gem to a lot of SIBOs uh, is you can pull off a lot of parts individually that you wouldn't normally think would come off by themselves. Uh, the first of which is going to be this cover. And you can also pull the bearing block out by itself and all the, that good stuff. But before we go any further, we're going to pull the cover off this. Where that? That's we're gonna put that on lower speed. That's running a little higher. Now something I did notice is this label's a little bit off and actually uh, covering one of that screws. It's not normal for a Felix, but that's all right. Or I say ET one more head in general. I think because of that, I didn't undo this screw all the way. And you can see what I'm talking about right there. All right, normally that would just pop open like that. And again, this goes like that. And we can see all the wonderful bits inside. And I, they, they're very proud that it's made in Germany. It even says it on the molded plastic. And these machines are some of the best machines on the market, in my humble opinion. I'm gonna pull the bumper off. I'll just show you how this comes up all apart here. And all that just comes off just like so, so you can wash it, do what you need to do there. Your power switch, it's just the normal power switch. It's the same power switch we see on a lot of vacuums right there. Um, Really easy to get to the circuit board. The net comes out. These seals don't really rot on this like an orc, so that's kind of nice. So we can pull the belt out, pull all this bearing pulley, all this out. So we pull the bearing blocks out. There's really no reason to go much further than this unless you're replacing parts. Everything's pretty obvious. The circuit board just slides in and out and all the circuit board connections Real easy, they just snap on and off right there. The uh, one thing about this is there is just a piece of sheet metal holding this in. 
So if you pull this out, there's a piece of sheet metal. Uh, I've got I've got who sent me a message. Somebody sent me a message asking me what this was. So now now that I've showed you, we'll put that all back where that belongs. Which of course is there we go. Um, everything's just really simple, easy to work on because it's meant to be worked on. So we're just gonna flip her over. You see these stainless steel things, they come out if need be. Like so, um, they're not, they all are the same on this one. Some of the SIBOs, these are different. Um, let's see if we can pull, pull them all out. Again, I just really wanted to wash all this stuff uh, because of Sylvia's allergies. A little help from a central vac never hurt. I'm just gonna wipe this down. Get my dirty rag is over here. And if you need to break this apart and wash this in the sink, you definitely can. Uh, again, I've had experience washing these things in dishwashers without problems as well. As long as it's a dishwasher without an exposed heating element. Um, compressed air never hurt anything and just make sure you're in a well ventilated area if you are using compressed air or you're outside so really simple not a whole lot to this and we're going to start putting this thing back together because again, this was clean, there's nothing really wrong with this. We're just wiping this down, kind of as a courtesy. Now, if you want to send me a vacuum to review, test, or repair, we do that. The details about that, I can be you can message me uh, through your favorite social media platform for the most part. Um, and if you're not subscribed to my channel, definitely go ahead and do that. We are on Facebook. Instagram, and of course YouTube. So hit that notification bell as well. Just wipe all this down. You can see there are, these teeth are what kind of hold everything in. That just snaps very nicely together, like so. Give you an idea how that comes on and off and then once it's on or off we're going to just finish wiping these down now these are kind of a structural support so i know it's popular on like some vacuum cleaners to actually remove this sort of thing uh, I don't recommend that on this particular cleaner. Um, and that might be just more of an old school Oryx store thing. That might not be something that a lot of people do anymore, but that, that used to be a thing. People used to remove their uh, ingest bars. And the purpose of these bars not only is structural, but if you get the cord or something sucked in there, the idea is it won't get wrapped around as easily. So that's, that's why those are there. Now, with... Uh, the SIBO plastic covers. It's real important to use a microfiber uh, if they're not all scratched up already. Uh, and the reason being is they're really a high polish in the plastic and I find that they scratch extremely easily. Uh, in fact, certain microfibers will even scratch these. So if you're the kind of person who wants that nice new machine look or you have a really picky customer, just understand that these uh, these do scratch and blemish easily. Now this one did come to us with a little bit of a blemish there, but it kind of polished out just now. Before we go any further, I'm going to put the belt back in. And I have a secret I like to do with the belts. And it's something I don't think a lot of people do, but I like to dress the belts. 
and I'll show you how we do that in a second. And that noise you just heard was that screw that's being retained by the label. Again, don't expect that when you're doing this in a shop. If you're trying to do this at home, please stop and bring this to a professional. Uh, and if it's under warranty especially, this would void your warranty if you did this. Uh, so, I'm just going to turn this by hand. We're just going to dress this belt like so. Of course, I don't have any screws in there, so this is coming loose. So just a little bit of soap from a hotel room or something like that is perfect for doing that. And that you just need a little bit on there. All right. Now we get everything uh, on the back side. We're going to start putting in the main screws. Now you see these are all set in with grommets. These grommets are kind of picky. You can use a screw gun. Just make sure you use it on a lower setting. And it's got to have that mechanical clutch. That's real important. The electronic clutch will not be sensitive enough in the drill. There you go. It's so weird they put the label on right there. And you're only going to put in three of the four long screws right now. One of the long screws actually holds this in place and holds the clean out door in place. There's actually really nothing on this. Um, and I don't know if you can see that, but right there, there's a clean out. The clean out door has a mark in it, and that's where this all coincides. When you're putting this clean out door, you got to get this little spring in there. Not hard to do, but it's a detail I've seen new text mess. And when you do it right, it should spring. So you're going to hold that door in with one hand. You're going to rock these tabs in there. Like so. And it doesn't matter which screw you want to drive in first. Just drive in one of them. There we go. Let me zoom out a little bit, let you guys see everything else. Again, check that door. Drop your drill off to the side. <laughs> Um, there's not much in here. Usually I would use a vacuum to clean this out if, if need be, but it's not particularly dirty. I like to put a little bit of oil or grease in this when I do this. Uh, just helps ease everything back together, helps quiet the machine down. Basically, I use oil if it's new, newer, if it's, you know, five, ten years old, then you might use some sort of uh, grease as well. Or you can just replace the bearing door. That's the nice thing about Seabells is the parts are pretty darn cheap. Um, you know, it's hard to believe that I actually cleaned a lot of my house with this, but there's not much on here. So, I'm just going to wipe this down. Again, this is more for... The allergies of the person who loaned me the vacuum, but if, if you were doing this uh, for realsies, <laughs> uh, that, that, that's something kids are using saying these days. Uh, you would actually put this in the dishwasher and hit this with a wheel, like I usually do. Um, most of this out of there. So when you put this in, you have to. Uh, line these teeth up and you want to check these teeth they can get chewed up the brush rollers are a wear item 
as of right now, brush rollers, they're like 35 bucks or something like that. Inexpensive. If you need to change it, don't hesitate. Um, there is a generic one. I don't recommend it. It's, it's kind of out of spec. It doesn't really lock in right over here, so that's something to note as well. I don't even have any paint marks on this to wipe off. So that is the Sibo uh, Felix head or nozzle. Now the other nozzle that I am going to address is going to be this nozzle. Now this is probably not going to come in for service. And one of the hacks you can do on this nozzle, kind of hate to use the word hack, but is you can remove a brush strip. Uh, it's kind of a setting on this thing. And that, that's to allow bigger objects to float through. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver. I'm not just going to pull the brush out. Clean this out. Again, here here in my uh, my workbench area, this this room is well ventilated, so just keep that in mind. I used this probably more than the other nozzle when I did the review on this machine. And it's quite the lovely nozzle. Now, with these nozzles, if the wheels start to squeak or anything, a little bit of kosher uh, love from the TriFlow will get you going. And uh, it is, yes, it is kosher. So let me just do that. Just drop that on the little axles, that makes a big difference. Yes, you can pull this out by hand, or you can use a wheel. If you're not familiar with the wire wheel, you absolutely should be if you're in vacuum repair. These are super handy for all sorts of things. Make sure you wear your safety glasses. Don't try this at home, kids. That's really all you have to do to clean this up. Now if you want to do this wet, you can do this wet. It can be kind of nice if there's a lot of hair, it keeps the brushes from melting and it stands the brushes up. So now that we're back from that, we're just going to insert this brush strip. Like I said, I prefer to just run this with the one. Um, and that's why SIBO gives you the quick access to this. And they've been doing this since this thing was made. It doesn't really have too many scuffs on it, but just for fun, we're just going to polish it. See, it really comes out pretty good. So those are the nozzles on Felix. Next, we're going to talk about the rest of the machine, where the bag is and stuff. And for that, we're going to use this nozzle to stand it up. I'm going to unplug it. So there are some things you should probably understand with the Felix. We're gonna raise the camera. This is the filter on here. Um, it's not HEPA rated, but it does blow relatively low on the particle counter. So definitely adequate filtration. Now, this pattern, you can change this depending on uh, which filter cover that you order or in filter. So you're going to see that these things, they have an arrow on them. Let me swivel them around so you can see them. They have this arrow on them. And basically, you move them, and these rings come off. Rings. These are the plastic rings that hold that on. And I'd say every one to two years change this thing. Um, these seem to last longer than, like, the Mila HEPA filter. Um, but... And they seem to also last longer than I'd say the SIBO like G series filter as well. And these guys, they go on. So that is your filter. And if you look at this, that's the filter material. 
that's the the showing material so if for some reason that's supposed to have an odor or something that would be something to take a look at and now we've exposed the SIBO Felix kind of how it really really is which is this this sort of bypass vacuum cleaner machine we're gonna open this up and when you work on this telescoping the handle up and down sometimes is not so there is one T20 screw down there and that is something I think a lot of people will miss so I'm pointing it out now Pull that up. now for some reason your power head doesn't get power don't go opening this up first the first thing I would check is actually the hose see that there is a switch right there and that if this hose is not in there listen for the click all the way it's not going to actuate and to pull the hose off with this orange thing hose pulls right off super easy so now we're left with this There's an arrow right there. I'm not sure it's all the way in frame. There's an arrow right there. And that arrow is where to wedge the cover off. You wedge this cover off, and lo and behold, we now have access to that switch. We have access to the circuit board. We have access to the plug and basically anything you need to diagnose the machine you now have access for. Um, and you can see that mechanical bit on the switch. Now if you need to get into the motor, that's where these screws, there's four of them, they pop right off, you can get into the motor. And the motor's actually in there on a slant. Go ahead and just do this so you all can see. So otherwise, I'm going to have to go and make another video <laughs> on this. You have to excuse me, I'm a one-man band here. Oh, and it's very important to make sure your machine is unplugged at this point. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I have gotten to this point forgotten to unplug one, so definitely do that. Nobody wants a zap. Probably won't kill you, but it won't be a, a nice day. And I can see that it's made in Germany right here. It's still stamped in there, which I think is a nice touch. this up. Now you got one more clip right there. And now so you can see where the handle would telescope in and out and you can see the motor. There's not much more to it than that. The motor's again in here on a slant. He's pretty small. Um, Amtec Italy. So that's good to know. The motor is sourced by Amtec of Italy. Oh, there's also a relief valve uh, down here. So make sure that that's uh, nice and free. Sometimes those get stuck. If you've ever worked on a Panasonic or like an S6 Mila, you're familiar with those. So put this all together. Simply. This goes on the outside. Remember, this is going to have to go on this clip. So that's all clipped together. Now we're going to put our four screws back. And 
And I'm going to do this just like the lug nuts on a car. We're going to do this kind of opposite and torque our pad, use a torquing pattern like so. Here everything's settling. So I torque the first screw. Bueno. Uh, now would be a good time. You want to make sure that this moves up and down. You didn't pinch anything. And I can feel the handle moving up and down, so that's good. We've got plenty of slack in there. We're going to make sure that that's clipped. Now, before you put this together, all these wires, they just kind of tuck in this little plastic thing. Something to note uh, as you put it together. And we're going to snap our piece on as well. Just gonna tap it the weight of the machine everything looks good we're gonna put our last screw uh, in there oh I may have been doing all that out of frame which I apologize using the same lens with this new camera actually crops part of the APC sensor and it's kind of interesting to work with. Now we're just going to make sure the machine has power after I've been in there and messed around. Remember that there's a switch right here. So now on to the upper section. We're going to put the uh, filter back in place. Uh, some vacuum shops think that they should like vacuum out their filters or blow them out with compressed air. I don't recommend that. There's no reason to get the dust back in the air. There's no reason that you shouldn't change this filter when it's time to do so. so I'm just going to state that for the record. Uh, and these filters are available from SIBO's website, they're available from Amazon, and of course your local vacuum shop. Go to your local vacuum shop. I'm sure they would be happy to help you out. Your labor rate will probably even be a little lower on this because it's so easy to fix. And when you put these on, you want to just tuck them in. Uh, put the door here. You want to you want to move them to the side to manipulate them, and then you just want to tuck them in there so they don't get caught on anything. All right, as I discussed before, the hose comes on and off with this right here. You have your bag check indicator here as well. And this indicator is not a light, it's just a pressure indicator. If you need to adjust it, you can do so right there. Um, I find this, is what, this vacuum actually comes adjusted from the factory and works at high altitude with its bag indicator, which is one of the few vacuums that does that. Um, so the SIBO bags just kind of close like that and pull them out. What else is down here is this filter right here. And there is a charcoal filter you can get to put in its place, and if you have animals, I'd highly recommend that. Uh, 
Otherwise, just keep an eye on this. This is really more for the bag breaks. Uh, doesn't really get dirty usually with normal use. But I, again, it's something I would replace, you know, after a year or two of use. Um, so Sibo Felix bags, really simply, straightforward to put in. If you don't put them in backwards. Oh, and there's a metal catch on here. There's two revisions of this metal catch. Uh, and when you order a new one, they come with both of them. And that metal catch keeps this from shutting without a bag. So that's just something to note. I'm telescoping the handle up so I have more room to work with there. Now we're just going to put this bag in there. And this bag fits in these grooves. Very, very simple. So there's no bag dock or anything to rip out. Tuck in any excess. And again, it's important that that metal piece is covered for that. And that's all there is to changing the bag on the Felix. Well, as always, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for watching. And big thank you to our Patreon supporters who have made this camera equipment possible and help keep this YouTube channel going. If you need your vacuum repaired, definitely hit me up on Patreon, send me a message. We offer that. So please like, subscribe, and stay awesome.